Hi everyone. Um, I am here to talk about HTTP messages. And HTTP messages in PHP, in a modern way, is done with PSR7. So PSR7 is the main topic of this talk. Uh, welcome to PHP Poland. Uh, my name is Hannes. You can follow me on Twitter with that handle, or just Google me. Um, so, as I said, my name is Hannes. I can describe myself in four emoji characters. The first one is the Belgian flag, because I'm a Belgian. Uh, the second one is a running little fella. Um, he's running like crazy, like me. So, I run marathons. I run uh, five times a week just to train for the marathons. I also do a lot of coding, like most of you guys, on the computer, like this. And I also love it. I love running, I love being a Belgian, and I love coding. So that's me. Um, on to the technical part of this talk. Um, PSR 7. PSR 7 is the seventh PHP standard recommendation from the PHP FIG. Uh, the PHP FIG is a, a body of established people that run um, a lot of downloaded packages or down packages that have been downloaded a lot. So PSR 7 is the seventh PSR. Uh, it's about common interfaces for HTTP messages. This talk will be divided into three chapters. The first one is the actual uh, PSR. What is in that? What are those interfaces? What, they, what do they stand for? The second one is Guzzle HTTP, because Guzzle is my favorite HTTP client. The latest iteration of Guzzle uses PSR 7 objects, so that will be a huge chunk of my talk. The third chapter is PSR 7 in HTTP apps. We all built HTTP uh, applications with Symfony or whatever framework, framework you want to use. And I will tell you how you can use PSR 7 objects in your framework, or how you can build your framework around those uh, request and response objects. So the first chapter, PSR slash HTTP message. This is the package on packages that, that includes all the um, HTTP message interfaces that model HTTP messages. So HTTP messages is a request object, or a request being sent to a server, and you get a response back. There's a, there's a, a, cup, a couple of more interfaces that come to it, but I'll come to them later. Um, it's common because you can use it in any framework, whether that's Laravel, if you hate it or not, uh, Symfony, Cake, PHP, you can use it anywhere. Um, it's being used for both HTTP clients and HTTP applications. So that I will show you in the next two chapters. It's also HTTP version independent, whether you're using HTTP 1.0, 1.1, or 2.0. doesn't matter. You can use these interfaces for whatever version of HTTP. Uh, there are also interfaces, which means that the PHP fig puts out those interfaces, and you are free to implement them. You're free to provide implementations of that. So what did we use before PSR 7? So in the pre-PSR 7 era, we used Symfony slash HTTP Foundation, or most people use that, um, which is also the base for a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of frameworks, uh, for example, Symfony and, and Laravel. So you, you would do Composer requires Symfony slash HTTP Foundation. Um, the big difference with that uh, old, which is, no, it's not old, but uh, with, the, with this previous approach, is that PSR 7 is interfaced. Symfony request and response objects are not interfaced, so you have to use that implementation. Um, so that's one main, uh, uh, yeah, well, one main, how do you say that? One main advantage over Symfony HTTP Foundation. Uh, the second one is uh, they are actually value objects. A request object or a response object are value objects. So. The PHP fig chose to make them immutable. So you can have one request object, and you can try to mutate that, but you get a new request object. Let's show you. Um, you have a request object, and you want to add a header to that. You want to send a re request, add a header with a uh, name and a value, and then you get a new object back, or a reference to a new object. The original ob request object will not have changed. So if you var dump the strict equal uh, comparison between the old and the new uh, request object, you will see that it will return false, which means that the original request object will never change. If you have a reference to a request object, you are absolutely certain that it will always have the same headers 
uh, and body, and etc., etc. So let's take a look. I'll close Keynote and go to my PHP Storm. I go to the vendors folder, go to PSR slash HTTP message, look in the source folder, and go to the first interface. This is the uh, PSR HTTP message message interface. This is the base interface for both the request and the response. Uh, because a request and a response all have the same headers, but uh, they can both have a body, they can both have headers, and they ha both have a protocol, uh, which is HTTP 1.0 or 1.1. Uh, so this is the base for both the request and the response. If you go to um, child interfaces, we can first look at the response interface. A response interface has, on top of the headers and the body, they al it also has a status code. If you have a response, it's HP um, 200 OK, for example. So 200 is a status code. It also has a reason phrase. The reason phrase is OK, or um, access denied. It's whatever is after the status code. If you go back to the message interface, and we go look at more children, children of that interface, you can see that there's a request interface. The request interface enhances or adds more methods to the message interface, like get request target, which is the whatever is HP 1.0, and then you have a slash in the path. That's the target. And then you have, uh, I think there's something more there. Yeah, the, the you also have the, the method. So the request target is actually the path, and the method is uh, get, post, put, delete, patch, whatever, head, uh, anymore. Um, so get method and with method are used to uh, retrieve the method or modify the request object with, an, with a different method. You also have get URI. I'll, I'll, get, bat I'll get back to that later. Um, you can see that a request interface also has ha another child interface, which is a server request interface. The server request interface adds even more methods. Um, you can get the server params, the cookie params, the uploaded files, the parsed body, uh, and some attributes. Those are all things that um, we can retrieve from the super globals from PHP, like dollar underscore post or dollar underscore get. Uh, that is also all encapsulated in these methods, so you'd never have to uh, Get to get these super globals. Also, get uploaded files uh, returns you a list of the files that are being uploaded with uh, a multi-part request or multi-part form request, something like that. If you go back to the request interface, you can see that um, it has a URI or a link to a URI. Uh, this is um, the entire request URI that you're sending to. For example. I'm getting uh, the resource HTTPS double uh, colon slash slash uh, github.com slash something 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 path uh, and the fragment as well hash something something that's all encapsulated in the URI um, and this is a pretty advanced string with a lot of fields so they actually encapsulated in the URI interface which has methods to ret retrieve the scheme, the authority, the user info, the host, the port, path. You can see there's a, a lot of fields, optional fields as well, uh, that belong in this URI. So they encapsulate it in, a, in, in an interface so that you can easily do with scheme HTTPS instead, instead of scheme HTTP, or um, with user info to add some basic authentication uh, in front of the uh, host name, something like that. You can also change the port. Um, so, there's one more thing I wanted to show you, and that's the stream interface. There's also a stream interface. This encapsulates the body of the request, either uh, or the response. So the response can have a body, but also the request can have a body. You can post something with a body. Um, and you see that every body, every <laughs> not, not everybody, but every body instance is a stream. You have these methods like and the file is seekable, rewind. No one likes to use these, right? 
So you can actually do to string or get content. This just re returns the entire string of the of the body. But if you want to be more performant and look at the memory usage, you can also use detach, which will return the underlying PHP stream. So you can use that stream to pipe to, let's say, S3 or something. You can, you can actually pipe an entire stream to S3 and move the body uh, from an incoming file to S3 without actually loading it into memory. So that's pretty useful. But for convenience, there's also the get contents, which returns the entire body. <coughs> so with that, I've covered all interfaces which are part of PSR7, except for the uh, file upload interface. But that's pretty, pretty easy. So these are all the uh, interfaces. And all of them are immutable, except for the stream interface. Remember that the stream interface is always a reference to a resource, and you cannot uh, just go clone that object and have a new um, a new uh, reference to a new resource. That's just stupid. You will not go and duplicate a two gigabyte file which has been uploaded just to have a new uh, stream interface object. So remember that the stream interface is not immutable, and the rest of the interface objects are immutable. So um, these are all interfaces, but there should be implementations as well, right? Because otherwise, you can't use it. There should be concretions, concrete objects. So if you go look on packages.org, we can see that there's two main packages out there that implement these interfaces. There's Guzzle HTTP slash PSR and also the, the Zend framework package. Uh, these are all, uh, these are both pretty popular. Um, so this concludes my first chapter. Uh, and I will now continue with the second chapter, which is about HTTP clients, or my favorite HTTP client, which is Guzzle HTTP slash Guzzle. Um, and this latest version, uh, of Guzzle uses PSR7 objects. So you can use a request object or a requ PSR7 um, request interface object, pass it on to the Guzzle client, and it will return a response object. So let's install this. Composer require Guzzle HTTP slash Guzzle. What version will this install? Composer.json file will now include a caret 6.2 uh, reference to guzzle.hp slash guzzle. Um, to know which version it will install, you can go to this packages temper checker, fill in the package name, hit search, and then uh, here in the top, um, it will show you which version it will install or which version constraint. And then it, it will also load all available versions and highlight the ones that actually um, are OK, uh, which versions um, could be installed with this version constraint. So caret 6.2 can install everything from 6.2 upwards to 7.0 excluded. Um, anyone ever seen this package or this website? Oh, one person. OK, it's made by Made with Love. It, it's the company that I, that I work for. Uh, you can find it under semver.mwl.be. But that's enough for uh, advertising for the company I work for. So what is new in version 6 compared to version 5 in Guzzle? Um, so as I told you, it uses PSR7 objects now, which is pretty convenient. Um, as I said before, um, Guzzle has this implementation or these concretions of the PSR7 interface objects under this package guzzle HTTP slash PSR7. So if you install guzzle HTTP slash guzzle, it will also install this package. Uh, if you go look into the composer.json file of this package, you will see that there's a provide block. And in this provide block, it will say this package provides a PSR, PSR slash HTTP message dash implementation. Um, if you go look on packages.org and we type in the package name, psr slash hp message implementation, you will see that um, there's zero installs and zero stops, which is pretty weird. Uh, oh, 
it's a virtual package, it says, in this highlighted green color. What is this, a virtual package? Let's click it. So we click on this, and then uh, packages will actually tell us that this is not a true package. You cannot install this. But there's a couple of packages out there that provide an implementation for this. S remember provide from the provides block in compose.json? So both the Guzzle HTTP slash PSR and Zen Framework slash Zen Directoros package, they provide an implementation for this. So if someone um, requires a PSR, PSR slash HTTP message implementation package, then you can actually install this and have a concretion for it. So you can look at it as this is the concretion, and the other one is the interface. So it's an interface package. Uh, the numbers are wildly outdated. I think they're at 7 million now instead of 1 million. So it's a super old uh, slide or screenshot. Um, we can actually new up a request now. Uh, you cannot new up a request interface object. You, ca you have to have an implementation. So if you use a Guzzle HTTP BSR7 request, you can do new request, give the method, give the URI, give the body and the headers, or the headers and the body. Uh, the order doesn't matter really. <laughs> I, I don't remember them. Um, so just a new get uh, request to this URI with these headers and this body. Yes, a get request can have a body if you want. Um, then you have a new PSR7 request object. You can pass it on to a new Guzzle client, and the Guzzle client will return a re response object. So client sent PSR7 request will return a PSR7 response. What else is new? Uh, let's see. No, I think there, there should be a demo here. Yeah. I think we have a demo for this. Let's go to this first demo file. So this is an index.php file, and I'm hosting it under my local host port 8001, because it's the first demo. Um, you can see here, I'm newing up a server request object from globals, which uses the dollar underscore server, dollar underscore query, and etc. Um, and it makes a new PSR7 request object. I can make a new client, pass it on to a controller, because we're building a mini application here. Uh, we're injecting it into the controller, and the controller will um, use this request. Uh, and then it will modify the request by getting the URI, changing the host name, changing the port, to forward it to api.github.com uh, with HTTPS, of course, because my local host doesn't run on HTTPS. I will uh, change the port to 443, which is the default port for HTTPS, and I set the URI again on the request. You can see here, I modify the request, and I capture the reference to the new request because the re request object is immutable. You cannot change the request object. Then I'm using the injected HTTP, uh, the Guzzle HTTP client. I send off the new request object and I get a response object back. Then I remove some headers here because Guzzle will, uh, will automatically decode the, the content and uh, the body. So I want to uh, remove those headers first. Um, and when I go back to the index file, you'll see that I have some kind of emitter from the Zend package, which will use a response object and send it with the header, the default PHP header function, and the echo function, and the output buffers, etc. You don't have to worry about that. You can use this emitter and then emit the response object. So what this will do, um, this index.php file and the controller, um, they will create a new request object from the super globals that come in with the PHP, uh, the PHP uh, script, um, I will send off the same request to api.github.com. I will capture the response and send it off to my user agent, the person that is uh, requesting uh, an, yeah, an HTTP request to, to this actual index.php file. So if you go look at my browser, you can see that I can go to localhost port 8001 and hit refresh. This is the main uh, endpoint for the api.github.com. If we 
request a user object, for example, the one from Marius. Oh. Yeah, OK. Then I can actually get his user object back. If I type a, r uh, a wrong name here, you can see that the, the, the user object is not found. And you can see here that the status code is 404. And I get all these X GitHub. Um, is this readable? Maybe not. I get all these X GitHub extra headers, uh, response uh, headers. And they're still there because I'm just passing on the response object. I got this response from GitHub. I just passed it on to my user agent. I didn't remove anything. So that's this demo. I can also do a correct uh, request. And then I get a 200 OK from cache. Um, and I get the same GitHub headers as well. So you can see that I also have a X rate limit remaining header, et cetera, et cetera. So I still get the, the rate limit. So back to my slides. What else is new in PSRs, uh, in, sorry, in Guzzle version 6? Um, what's new is promises. Promises uh, give you a way to do asynchronous calling with the HTTP client. Uh, it's not so new. It's been around since 5.0.0, but now it's a pretty more, uh, a pretty, um, it's a little bit more convenient. So what Guzzle did is they abstracted the promise, um, uh, the promise things to Guzzle HTTP slash promise. So it's in a separate package and you can use it without the actual client. Um, to do an asynchronous call, you don't do client send request object, but you do client send async request object. And instead of returning a response object, it will return you a promise object. And then you can use the then method on that promise to wait for the response to come back. And then the callable that you pass on in this then method will be called whenever the response has come back. And then you can, then you can use the actual response object to do something with it. Um, what's also important is that you have to wait for the promise to, res uh, to resolve, or otherwise your index.php script will end before the actual response has, has come back. So you have to wait for it. I'll do a small demo about that too. So this is async calling in PHP. Someone's, if someone says that you can only do this in Node.js, they're wrong. So this is the actual same uh, script that as before, except I, I'm using async calls. Let's, let's show you. This, is the, um, this index.php file is completely the same, but I'm using a different controller. This one, a controller in the demo2 namespace. Uh, and here I'm doing send async. Send async returns me a response, a uh, promise, sorry, uh, a promise which I need to um, give a callback. Afterwards, I need to wait for the promise to resolve. And uh, when that's done, when that's resolved, then I can actually return the response object. So this is exactly the same, but asynchronous. Now, why is this useful if you're only doing one request? So let's do something crazy. Let's do multiple requests. Let's go to demo tree, do multiple requests. So this is actually completely the same, uh, a different controller though. Now this controller will listen to the URI and get the path. Uh, destructure it with the, or get all the usernames with the commas, and then we could do multiple calls to api.github.com slash users. So, demo tree is, you can use, you can still request one user object, right? But you can attach more user objects, like the one from Gianluca my friend Gianluca. 
Um, so in here you can see there's one user object and there's two user objects. I can add as many as I want. I can my and I can add my own. Um, the Wi-Fi is getting slow. So I now have three user objects and I can add a fourth one. One, two, three, four. Notice that oh Mike Seaman son. Right. Now I have Mike as well. So I have four user objects and they're returned in the same order as their uh, appended to the URI. So I have Marius first, then Jan Luca, then myself, and then Mike. So I have four user objects and they're returned in the same order as me, uh, as I requested them. Which is because I used the promise all method, which is a method provided by Guzzle, um, which takes an array of promises and then make sure that the callables that you've passed to the then method are being executed in the same way as the promises that are in that um, array. So this, this profiles uh, um, array has the same order as the promises. You can also see that I use a Zend framework JSON response object which conveniently uses the application slash JSON header by default. So, I have number four, maybe, let me go back to my slides. Do I need to do number four here? No. So, what else is new in version six? Um, in version six, um, or previously, uh, or before version 6, uh, we had emitters or some kind of eventing system in Guzzle, um, but now that's all gone. You cannot subscribe uh, event listeners, you, don't, uh, you cannot create emitter interface objects anymore, uh, but we can actually use callable middlewares. These are middlewares that you can put on a stack that are um, executed sequentially. So you get a request, the first middleware is called with the re request object, um, it can possibly alter the request object, pass it on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And then the response is going back through the middleware chain, first the last middleware, then the previous last middleware, and then ultimately the first middleware. So each middleware gets the opportunity to change a request object and to change a response object. So this is what it looks like, how you should use it. Uh, there's a handler stack um, uh, object in Guzzle, uh, which you can call the create static method on, uh, which returns a default stack. This default stack um, adds a exception middleware, a retry middleware, and a uh, automatic redirect middleware. Uh, you can add more middlewares as you like uh, with the push method, the unshift method, or the remove method. Um, then when you new up the new, uh, new Guzzle client, you actually have to pass it with the handler option. If you don't pass a stack, it will. Uh, does my mic glitch for a sec? Um, if you do not, if you do not pass the handler stack, um, then the client will automatically call this handler stack create method. So, what does a middleware look like? This is the basic uh, code for a middleware. Um, it takes the next middleware. If you call it, it, you, it should pass a next middleware, um, and then it returns a uh, a different function. A callable. This is actually a thunk method. Some some people call it the thunk method, um, and you can call that function anonymous function with a request object and some opti options. Um, you can then call uh, the handler method, which is the the next middleware, which will return a promise. You can then uh, do something with the promise at the then method here to. Uh, return the response or something, or alter the response if you want, that's completely optional. And then you can return it, and the uh, promise will be returned to the previous um, middleware. So there's two, two points, access points, or uh, code points, where you can do something. You can alter the request if you want, or you can alter the response if you want. Remember that the requ request and response objects are immutable, so you have to return the mutated object. Um, 
So you can do either, either um, altering the request or the response object, but there's also the, the map request object uh, on this middleware object, uh, map request static method. So if you only want to modify the request, you can use this helper. So you don't have to write these, uh, this ugly blob of anonymous functions. So you can use the middleware uh, map request method to create a simple middleware that can only modify a request. Or you can do the same with response. Uh, you can also use the PSR, s uh, PSR tree logger middleware, um, which allows you to log requests to a PSR tree logger, like monolog or debug bar logger. Um, I will show you, um, in this demo, I will show you uh, how we do async calling and we log them to a timeline so we can profile it. And we can also log to the, to the PSR tree logger. So I will show you how we do it. Right. This is the fourth demo and the index.php file. Uh, we get the server request object um, and we get a URI um, to set up a PHP debug bar. Anyone familiar with the debug bar? Anyone familiar with the debug bar in Symfony? It's actually the same thing. Um, so we can create a new middleware. There's a package for that, of course. There's a package for everything. Uh, and then you can add that middleware to the stack. Is my microphone glitching again? Um, you can add that middleware to the handler stack. Um, you can also uh, use the log method to add a PSR tree logger to the uh, to the handler stack. So we add two more middlewares to the default handler stack. We inject the handler stack to the into the client. We inject the client into the controller, and then we pass on the JavaScript renderer to the controller as well, because in here we're doing some ugly uh, HTML templating in PHP. Please don't do this at home. Use this, use it like a Twig template or something. Um, what we will do here is, same as in the previous controller, uh, make an array of promises, resolve all, all those promises, and make some HTML with the returned profile object. So let's show you what this does. Um, so this request runs under port 8004. And I will pass in all GitHub usernames of all my colleagues at Made with Love. Um, and then I will render, render a, a lot of image, um, yeah, HTML, HTML image tags. Um, and in the bottom, I will render a PHP debug bar. So you can toggle this debug bar. And then you can see in the timeline, if you hit on timeline, you will see that there's a, uh, there's been a lot of requests github api so you can see all these requests have run async they all took about eight one point eight seconds up to two point six seconds and the total time of this request actually took two point six seconds if i would do these 21 requests sequentially then it would take me like 50 seconds so this is um, this proves that we can actually do async calls in HTTP. We can also open the messages tab, and in there we, s we see that um, this is actually a PSR tree logger. You can see that Guzzle has been logging every single request to this messages tab. So this, pr this proves that I have been returned a lot of HTTP 200 OK uh, responses. So. Um, what happens if you have a company with, let's say, 200 employees? Then you get 200 open HTTP calls, which is not that good. So we actually want to throttle this. Um, let's go back here and open number six. I, I will skip number five, it doesn't matter. Um, and in here, I'm using the each promise, which is a, a promise provided by Guzzle HTTP slash promises, um, uh, and it allows you to do 
only four concurrent uh, promise resolving actions. So what you will see in the timeline is that at each and every point in time, there will be only four HTTP requests uh, running. Um, we can also pass in a uh, fulfilled callback, which will uh, append the profile to the profiles array whenever a uh, promise is resolved. So what you will see is port 8006. We do the same thing. We get all the H, uh, api.github.com user profiles, but at each, every, each and every point in time, there will be at most four requests running. You see? Pretty cool, huh? Again, we have all the PSR tree logging entries inside the messages tab. So this is how you do profiling with Guzzle. Cool. Um, so to recap this uh, chapter of my presentation, I still have 20 minutes, that's OK. Um, what Guzzle does, it's provide, it provides you a PSR7 um, implementation. Uh, so all these objects in Guzzle HP slash PSR7 are objects that are interfaced with PSR7. Um, Guzzle version 6 also provides middlewares instead of uh, event subscribers and uh, event emitters and stuff. Um, and you can do async calling by using the send async method or request async method um, and it will return you promises which you can append callbacks to with the then method uh, which will be executed whenever the response comes back. So, on to the last chapter. Uh, I showed you how to use PSR7 request and response object with an HTTP client. Now let's sh switch it the other way around. Let's use PSR7 in HTTP applications. I actually already showed you with the um, server request factory from Globals uh, how you can create a new request object and return a response object with the uh, emitter from Zend. So that's already an HTTP application. Um, but we're going to um, add some more features there. So um, let's skip this real quick. Doesn't really matter. Okay, um, what about existing Symfony applications? Um, a lot of people here have Symfony applications running in production, whether that's Symfony, uh, Laravel, or S uh, I think Silex. Uh, all of all of them are based on Symfony request and response objects. What if you want to st start using PSR seven in your application? Well, there's a useful package for that. Uh, it's provided by Symfony and it's, and it's called PSR HTTP Message Bridge. This bridge allows you to convert Symfony request and response objects to PSR7 request and response objects, and vice versa. So you can see that if you have a Symfony request object, you can actually make a PSR7 request object out of that. Um, it will use Zen's implementation, so it will need a concretion to be able to actually new up a request and response object, but it's all type hinted with PSR HTTP message uh, namespace. So, um, next thing is middlewares. Uh, anyone heard about middlewares in HTTP applications? Come on. I bet you heard about it. Uh, anyone familiar with stack PHP? No? Okay. Um, so, stack PHP uses. Um, the HTTP kernel from Symfony, uh, yeah, from Symfony slash HTTP Foundation, I think, um, which allows you to add more layers and layers and layers around your existing application. So each middleware is responsible for one uh, aspect of your application, whether that's the session or authentication or throttling or um, you know basic authentication or something. Each and every middleware can have uh, can be wrapped around an existing uh, middleware uh, or an application. And uh, the the green dot here is a middleware itself, so you can push that middleware onto the stack as well. 
So what happens with a request and response lifecycle is that you create a new request object and you, you pass it on to the HTTP middleware stack. Um, and the stack will say, oh, well, uh, here's the first middleware. And it passes on the request object to the first middleware. And then it tells the middleware, um, if you're done with this request, um, just pass it on to the next middleware. It will pass on a reference to the next middleware, which is another HTTP kernel implementation. So by doing that, each and every middleware has the option to modify the request object. Uh, in Symfony, that meant uh, actually uh, mutating the object because it's not immutable. Um, each and every middleware also has the option to say, oh no, I'm not going to call the next one. For example, authentication, the authentication middleware can say, oh well, this user is not authenticated. I'm going to return a not authenticated response object back. So it's not going to call the next middleware. Um, the green dot is, thanks. The green dot is mostly a router or something that is calling the actual controllers based on the on the on the path of the request. So when the router is done, it will have created a new response object, and then it will return that response object to the new outer layer middleware. So this is the the, the the middleware here that is being called is the actual same middleware that got the option to modify the request object first here. So each and every single middleware of the entire stack will have the option to modify or add new headers to the response object. So in the first pass, every middleware has, middleware has the option to modify the request object. And going to the outer layers, each and every middleware again has the option to modify the response object. So that's how middlewares work. Um, for PSR7, um, there's been an unofficial uh, syntax or uh, API for a middleware. Uh, it looks like this. It's a, a basic callable. It doesn't have to be interfaced or an object or something. It can be a simple callable, which takes a request interface object, a response interface object, and a next callable. It doesn't matter what the next callable is. It just needs to be able to call it. So it's a super simple uh, definition. Uh, in that middleware, you can have the op you have the option to alter the request object. Uh, what's useful there is PSR seven re request objects are immutable. So if you're keeping a reference to an old re request object, you're absolutely sure that it's not going to be altered. So you pass on the altered request object to the next middleware, uh, and also an empty response object. And then the next middleware object, when it's done, when every middleware is done. Um, you will get a returned response object. So each re each middleware will return the same or a modified potentially uh, response object. So each and every middleware has the option again to modify the response. For example, uh, some uh, cookie middleware can have the option to encrypt cookies before sending off the response to the user. So that's how it looks like. There's a couple more, uh, a couple uh, real life examples for that. Uh, for example, you can have a firewall. You can have throttling with rate limits and stuff. Uh, you can have a robots.txt file uh, middleware. Uh, you can do some logging in there. You can do session stuff in there. You can encrypt cookies, whatever you want. Uh, so the basic thing is you can wrap your application with different middlewares to enhance your application to have a lot of features without having to do that in your controllers. Um, for PSR7, there's a couple of Im implementations out there that allow you to pass on an array of middlewares. Uh, there's the Relay PHP project, there's Middleman, uh, and all of them allow you to just uh, say, this is an array of middlewares, uh, or the middleware class names, and then they resolve it from a container whenever it's needed. So uh, what about stack PHP middlewares? There's a bunch of middlewares out there that use the Symfony HP kernel. Uh, the good news is there's a project for that that you can use to wrap existing middlewares uh, and create a new PSR7 uh, middleware. Uh, it uses the hack, I think, 
h4cc, whatever the username is, slash stack psr7 bridge, which actually uses the Symfony psr HTTP message bridge to convert psr7 and Symfony uh, request and response objects in between. So um, there's also a project called Scarotero something something slash psr7 middlewares, which allows you to use a lot of Predefined or pre-built middlewares, so you don't have to write you you don't have to write themselves. So small demo, and then I'm done. Go to number seven. There's an index.php file um, with an array of middlewares. I only have two middlewares here, but the first one is basic authentication. So you can protect your application by wrapping it with a simple single uh, middleware, which is called the uh, basic basic authentication middleware, um, and then in the middle of your l layer of uh, middlewares, you have your router. The router can be in middleware as well. <coughs> so, I'm using middleman to uh, create a new dispatcher, which will create, um, let's see, which will create a dispatcher, which in itself is a middleware again. So you can use this built object with a lot of middlewares to use it in a different application. So you can have uh, the same application reused in different places. Uh, you can call this, you can see this dispatch method. This is the actual, thanks, this is the actual um, middleware that can be used. So you can rewrite, rewrite this as dispatcher, comma, string, Dispatch, dispatch. This in itself is a middle callable middleware as well. So we pass on the server request object and a empty response object, uh, and it will re return a uh, new response object. And then we will emit the same response object. So what this will do is uh, it will call a basic authentication checker. And if that succeeds, it will go on to the router, and the router will call some controller. So let's try this. 8007. So here we go. My browser hits a basic authentication, uh, basic authentication middleware, and middleware says, oh, you are not authenticated. Give me the credentials first. I don't know what the, what was the, I forgot. PHP con. Nope. PHP Poland. Oh, no, no. It's just Poland, Poland. Super basic. There we go. <laughs> okay. Let's wrap this up. Um, PSR 15 will actually change that, but it's not accepted yet. So the PHP fig is still working on an official uh, middle PHP middleware uh, spec, uh, which has a middleware interface, client middleware, server middleware, a frame interface, and a stack interface, which is a lot more complicated than the simple uh, callable middleware thing. But OK, you can look it up on PHP fig under uh, the PHP fig um, uh, GitHub repository. Um, as, as a recap for this. Uh, Last chapter, I talked about Symfony objects and using those in between uh, PSR7 objects. I called about, uh, I talked about application middlewares um, and how you can wrap your application with ex extra e extra features um, which are contained in those middlewares. As a basic recap, um, I talked about PSR. I hope you all understand that PSR slash HTTP message only includes interfaces and that there's a couple of implementations out there, including the ones from Guzzle and Zend. Um, the second chapter was about Guzzle HTTP. I, used, I talked about how you can use that to send off PSR7 request objects and re get response object back. I also talked about um, the how you can wrap your application with PSR7 middlewares uh, to add more features. So with that, I would like to thank you. Any questions?
I'm not going home before I get one question. <laughs> Please. Come on. Don't be shy. Yeah, one. You said uh, that Guzzle is your favorite uh, library to, uh, <laughs> to use with uh, PSR7. So did you find any other libraries you can use or uh, just you didn't look for? Yeah. Um, no, I did, uh, I did look for it. Um, so I skipped a part here, uh, which actually talked about decoupling HTTP clients. So you can actually use multiple HTTP clients which can uh, handle PSR7 request and response objects. What this project does, php HTTP slash HTTP plug, uh, is it allows you to use either Guzzle or um, Zend HTTP client or curl or whatever you want. There's a list here. Uh, Guzzle version 6, Guzzle version 5 um, to actually use uh, PSR7 request and response object. So if you're still stuck with Guzzle version 5 because of you know legacy in your application or even an older version, maybe Guzzle version 3 or 4, then you can use PHP HTTP plug to abstract that away and still use the old HTTP client and also use uh, PSR7 request and response objects. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, thanks. Okay, perfect. More questions? <laughs> Thanks. Right.